from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for November 7, 2016. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready to get started with trading this week. In today's video, I'm going to do a general overview of each of the U.S. currency pairs in anticipation of this week's trading. And I'm going to highlight some of the key levels that we will be looking for entry and exit opportunities. On this week's news calendar, of course, we have some notable events starting with the U.S. presidential election on Tuesday and the RBNZ rate statement and rate news on Wednesday. Both events could high, cause high trading volumes and high volatility, and you'll want to be sure to check your financial calendars for any other news releases as we go throughout this week. Now, as I begin today's analysis, you can see we have a few holdover trades from last week and the market opening in our favor on a couple of them, and I'll be talking about those in today's video analysis as well. Let's get started here on the USD CHF, the dollar franc. I'm actually going to zoom out one time here on the chart so we can get a better view of the long-term outlook here. If you note here, we've been studying this in the live trade room for several weeks, the larger big black box that you see here on the chart, and the range that this currency pair has been primarily playing in for quite a long time, going all the way back to the beginning of the year. Zoom it back in here a little bit. You can see recently coming off the top of that range, you can see the red box back here, black circle, red box. So it's been coming off there. The 100 period moving average kind of leveled off right in the middle of the range and we're just underneath there today. Let's zoom it in one more time here on the daily time frame. Take a look. 100 period moving average sitting right here, right around the 97.75 level, just underneath our green shaded area, 97.80, 9,800. So for this week, it's pretty clear what we're going to be looking for. Of course, we did get that gapping high over the weekend as well uh, but uh, what we'll be looking for is one of two things and we'll just put a couple of arrows here on the chart first off we'll be looking here uh, if it breaks let me change this arrow so it looks a little bit more dominant on the chart we'll be looking for the breakout above the green zone that would give us a clue that is going to continue to pressure higher above the green zone above the moving average above 9800 above this black trend line that would give us some evidence that it's going to continue to reverse and go back up against the move that we had last week on the other hand we'll, what we'll be looking for is a bounce off of this area if it stays underneath it if the largely the election news is viewed as negative for the US and really we don't know how the market's going to interpret uh, tomorrow's election news but if it's viewed as largely as negative for the US it turns around and goes back down if it's viewed as positive interpreted by that way by the market this will likely break through the green zone so 9780 90 the key area of resistance right now. And of course, the next area is the purple zone, a little bit higher than the market, 98.35. And the next area of support is the yellow shaded area just underneath the market around the 97.30 level. So if you're looking to go short, you're pretty close to a, a, a spot to do that now here into the green zone. If you're looking to go long, you probably need to wait a little bit, wait for it to break through that green zone before you have an opportunity to take a long here on the dollar franc. Let's go ahead and move on over here to the euro dollar. Of course, just the opposite here. In fact, we did have the trade there from on the euro dollar going on the chart uh, or going at the bottom of the chart. You can see the euro dollar trade from the 11 uh, 15 level, the short from 11 15 level that we took a couple of times, by the way, last week underneath the black triangle pattern that you see there. You see this descending triangle pattern. We were underneath there. You see the two blue circles back here representing historical support acting as resistance. We took some Fibonacci from a few different levels. Let's go ahead and zoom it in. You can see all of that right there underneath the green zone. And by the way, the 100 period moving average sitting there. So last week we did a couple of times take shorts into or underneath the 111. 20 level and you can see clearly the market gapping lower in our favor over the weekend currently sitting 45 pips I have closed majority of profit on that trade by the way uh, at this point what we need to see is the breakdown of that yellow zone it needs to break down underneath 11 or sorry 110.55 uh, or so 110.55 is the bottom of the yellow zone 110.75 is the top of the yellow zone breaking underneath there would lend it uh, lend way to going all the way down here to the blue zone into the 1.1000s or even into the 109 Hundreds. The other opportunity, of course, is if, again, the, the election results are viewed as negative for the market, we'll likely look for the turn back, you know, a bounce off of this yellow zone of support back towards the green zone. And possibly if it's significant, we could even see the break of the green zone and continuation of the upside here for the euro dollar. So, uh, and that'll be a, a significant area right around that 100 period moving average. So we have a couple of things to think about on the election uh, eve here, uh, but the yellow zone's the main area to focus in on. And again, 
locked in profit, closed a majority of profit on the trade and locked in with the stop loss. Can't lose on the remaining portion of that Euro dollar trade from last week. Taking it over here to the GBP USD. Last week, of course, uh, we saw some significant push higher here on the GBP, pushing above this yellow zone. 2430, 2485, or 2385 is the yellow shaded area. It's been an area of congestion before you see the blue circle back here on the left hand side of that yellow zone congestion there before. So what we're looking for, one of two things, it's not too hard to figure this out, I'm sure. You either need to see the breakdown underneath that yellow zone, which is underneath 123.85, and the turn lower. That makes sense fundamentally with the Brexit news that we have, of course, uh, that's looming over the next few months, uh, that we would look for this to turn short underneath the yellow zone and start going back down in the longer term downtrend. But as we saw last week, the market can surprise us. So if it stays above that yellow zone, we might look for it to go back higher. Tomorrow's U.S. election could have some impact here as well. If it's viewed uh, by the market as largely negative for the U.S. dollar, this again will turn back higher, bouncing off this yellow zone, targeting back to the next resistance, which at minimum is 25.10, 25.44, the green shaded area just above the market. I'll go ahead and put an arrow there as well. If it's viewed as positive for the U.S., and again, it could go both ways for a little while, uh, 2320, 123.20, 122.95 is the orange zone. As your first area of support, you can see historical resistance there as well. So yellow zone will be the area you want to focus in on this week. Above it goes higher, below it goes lower. But watch for high volatility across all U.S. currency pairs this week. Take it over to the USDCAD. We have been stuck in a little period of congestion, ranging for a little bit more than a week now. I'm just going to say, first off, we're in a longer term uptrend. That's not too hard to see here on the chart. We zoom it in one time and take a look at that. We have been stuck inside this little black box for uh, several days. Let's count them out. Today included one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days. We see it kind of stuck inside this little black box between the blue zone, which is 1.3400, 1.3425, the orange zone, 1.3355, 1.3330. So we're stuck inside there. We saw a little bit of a gap lower on the weekend, but then it came right back up and settled out underneath our resistance zone. As I've said in the trade room uh, over the past couple of weeks, one of two things needs to happen. It needs to break above this box to go higher, or it needs to break below this box to go lower. And it's up in the air which direction it's going to take. Now, of course, we watch Canadian news for this. We watch oil news for the U.S., the Canadian dollar as well. Uh, and then we also uh, will be paying attention and watching the uh, U.S. election this week to see how that impacts. If it's positive, re uh, regarded as positive for the U.S., whichever way it goes, positive tends to cause this to go higher, this currency pair to go higher, negative. Viewed as negative tends to cause this currency pair to go lower. That could be last week's uh, last daily candle. Could be some clue to an evidence of reversal. But again, nothing really significant there. For our time frame, it doesn't really change our mind about this, does it? Just kind of bouncing around in here. We did get the gapping, but it came back up already into the blue zone. So probably the blue zone is your main area of focus. A break above it turns higher. If it bounces off it, orange zone, of course, is your support. Let's take it on over here to the US yen. Again, this is a trade opportunity that uh, we held over the weekend and significant profit on this one. Uh, over 100 pips already opening up for the week, gapping in our favor. So that's good news. Uh, easy way to start off the week. We've been studying the red trend line as the uptrend. We've also been studying this 100 period moving average coming into the chart, settling out just into the upper 102s, 10295, 10290, you can 8590. You can see just underneath the green zone. We've look at the blue circles here, the red circle back here. You can see we've been studying this. We have some Fibonacci in there as well. So we uh, were looking a couple of times last week to go long here into the green zone. If you held over the weekend, it opened in your favor and you're in significant profit now as it has now pushed to the next resistance level the orange shaded area. Now, the thoughts about the market coming back down and uh, filling the gap, what about that? Sure, uh, there is the possibility, but at this point, I think it will need to get back underneath the orange shaded area. That orange zone is 103.95, 104.20. That's your area to focus in on today. If it gets, stays above it, we look for the market to continue to pressure higher as it is right now, pressuring back up towards the 105 level, which is the blue zone just above the current market. Underneath it, only if it gets back underneath, I think 104, 103.95, if it gets back under the orange zone, then we might look for the gap, uh, fill the gap back down to the green zone as your target on the way back down. That's the key point about filling the gap is it has to give us evidence that it's going to turn around and go back down. We don't just want to assume 
it's going to go down. So at this point, it needs to get back underneath the orange shaded area. Again, I've closed profit on the trade. I can't lose. Uh, stop loss is locked in. Take a look. There's your orange zone. There's the gapping from the weekend. We bought it down here at the green zone. There's the gapping and pushing, pushing right now, st sitting on top of the orange zone. So there's the reasoning behind not going short to fill the gap because it's sitting on top of support, which is that orange shaded area. So it doesn't mean you just instantly want to buy it, assuming it's going to continue higher above here, because that's that's a little bit worrisome. Uh, again, let's watch the election results. Positive for the U.S. dollar continues to see the uprise here on the U.S. yen. Negative, we go back down underneath the orange zone, and that becomes our clue for reversal here on the dollar yen. Taking over here to the AUD, USD, we, again, this is a trade that we held over from last week, and this one not working in our favor, but uh, I'm encouraged by the other two currency pairs in the direction positive for the U.S. dollar. But take a look at all those blue circles and blue boxes on the chart within the bit larger black box range. Uh, we're at the top, so I'm very discouraged about going long into those black bo or blue boxes that you can clearly see have been resistance for the past several weeks. Take it on down here to the four hour time frame. Look at what's happened most of last week. Just settling into that blue shaded area that's one of those blue boxes as resistance. You can see that right now. It tells you pretty clearly that you don't want to go long right now until it breaks above that blue shaded area. So that's the first thing I would say is the blue zone is resistance. You don't want to go long into resistance. You don't want to buy it at the high point. You want it to go down before you buy it or break above that blue zone. So two things you're watching for today. The market to start finally going back down like it did on uh, the euro or, or positive for the dollar like it did on the euro, like it did on the franc, like it has done on the, the US yen. We want to see some positive movement for the US dollar. That sends us back down underneath the blue zone as resistance back down to the purple zone. If we see some negative movement for the US dollar, negative re election results, this will likely challenge the resistance all the way back at the green zone. And of course, a break of that, we could see a significant rally for the Australian dollar. Moving on over to the NZD USD, we're at the top of the range. Not too hard to see here on the daily time frame, is it? This big blue box that's on my chart, we're at the top of the range. We've studied resistance into here, the red circles, the blue circle. In fact, we studied this as a head and shoulders, the blue, black, and red circle. We're at the top of that, right there into the pink zone. So you don't want to buy it into the pink zone. I said that last week. We do, of course, have uh, the interest rate news coming up on Wednesday of this week, 3 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. We have the interest rate news, so you'll want to pay attention to that uh, and see how that result comes out for the uh, New Zealand dollar. Of course, right now, I think it's forecasted that they're going to change the interest rates or cut the interest rates if they do. Uh, that could be viewed as largely negative and uh, pressure this back down again from the significant resistance. If they don't change or uh, you know they have some good news to say about the economy, we could see the breakout above here. So uh, we'll be watching this pink zone primarily this week. Underneath it, sorry about that, underneath it we look for it to go, uh, well I keep grabbing the wrong arrow there. I'm trying to get one of those down here. There we go. Underneath it, we look for resistance and for it to go back down. Orange zone right now, 7300, 7280, holding as our support. I'll go ahead and bring that arrow down here. The orange area, 7300, 7280. That's holding as our support currently. Underneath there, if it can get underneath that, we'll look for the continuation lower or the reversal here for this currency bear, and that would be under the orange zone. Take it down to the four hour time frame. Uh, let's zoom out one time like this and squeeze the chart in a little bit. So there it is right there. You can clearly see what's happening in the market. You either need it to find support here at the orange zone, break the pink zone, and continue the upside here for the New Zealand dollar. And again, we have a lot of news this week that could affect this currency pair. Or it breaks the orange zone. We see reversal back down towards the green shaded area. Uh, and again, all of that could change as we go through the election results and the rate news for New Zealand this week. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.